not even a third through the season. But Brock Purdy this year, completion percentage is worse than Will Levis. His touchdowns are lower than Justin Fields, and his giveaways double Daniel Jones. He has regressed to the mean. And what's concerning is he's only missing one piece, Christian McCaffrey. And by the way, the backup running back to Christian McCaffrey is actually pretty good. They're missing one piece. So basically, unless everything is perfect, he's a guy. Well, that, that's the opposite. Every stockbroker, every day trader bro is brilliant when the earnings reports are good. What happens when they're not? You losing all my money? Everybody's good in this league when they have time to throw and they have a stacked roster. A lot of quarterbacks win games. That's not the league, okay? Um, and remember, once you pay Brock Purdy, you got to take away some of the toys. Yeah, like right now he's free. Last guy taken in the draft, he's free. So you can surround him with an all-star team. You, you, you don't get Debo and Ayuk and Kittle and Trent Williams if you have to pay him $39 million a year or $49 million a year. So tonight really is a no-excuses game for Brock Purdy. First of all, Geno Smith is very average at quarterback, the one he's going up against. It's a big game. Everybody knows it. No complacency. Seattle is missing um, three starters on their defense. Uh, outside of uh, Christian McCaffrey, all the weapons are there. The Niners remain a very good first-half team. They should take a lead and quiet the stadium. And the other thing is, it's a great head coach, Kyle Shanahan, against a rookie head coach. And as J-Mac pointed out yesterday, rookie head coaches, the first time they play on Thursday night football, it's not good. It's just not good. Here's the other thing about Brock Purdy. Uh, and I do think he's athletic, more athletic than I gave him credit for. And I think he's fine. I think he's a good quarterback. But good quarterbacks do not hold trophies. You know, they get into the playoffs, get bounced in the first round. That's what good quarterbacks do. And the standard for the Niners is not the standard for most teams. Only two teams in this league have a standard of winning a Super Bowl. That's it. Maybe Buffalo. If they get to a Super Bowl, everybody will be happy in Buffalo. That's next. Maybe the Ravens get to a Super Bowl. Okay, Lamar can win. But there's only two organizations in the NFL that getting to the Super Bowl is not enough. Kansas City and San Francisco both get there all the time. That's incredible. Even Buffalo and Baltimore, if they get to a Super Bowl and lose, you'd be like, it would justify McDermott can coach, can get through the Chiefs. Hey, but Lamar can win playoff games. We can stop talking about that. You'd be okay. There wouldn't be a victory parade, but it'd be okay. San Francisco loses again. Shanahan's in trouble, honestly. He probably blew another lead. But this is the thing that does worry me. Uh, first off, the Eagles would not be happy just getting to the Super Bowl. The Buffalo Bills at this point would not be happy with just getting to the Super Bowl. Uh, the, the Baltimore Ravens would not be happy just getting to a Super Bowl. And the Buffalo Bills neither. So I wholeheartedly disagree with that. Is that if you look, they call them splits. If you look at the 49ers offensive splits, first half, second half, quarter splits, here's what's worrying. They are fourth in the NFL offensively in the first half. 22nd in the second half. Now, why would that be? Because the first half is Kyle Shanahan's scripted plays. It's not the coach. You keep blaming the coach. Once everybody's seen the scripted plays, you know the second half where Mahomes makes a run to win a Super Bowl. Or Mahomes makes a throw to beat Garoppolo. Jimmy G on script was great. Needed a big throw in the fourth. Missed it. That's the difference between Brady and a lot of guys that couldn't beat him. Tom was good on script, okay. But the truth was, Tom never had a touchdown, I don't believe, in the Super Bowl. First quarter ever. Brady was a second-half guy. That's when Tom had seen the defense, had seen the tricks, had seen their game plan. Then Tom took over the game in the second half. Patriots were not a dynamic, robust, first-quarter Super Bowl team. They didn't drop sevens. They hit a few threes. So you win Super Bowls and big playoff games off script. You try to take leads on script. And the Niners continue to take leads and can't do anything. So, you know, <laughs> look at it this way with the quarterback. When the GPS gets turned off, you still got to get us home. Okay? GPS is turned off. Shanahan's plays off. They're done. You got to get a win.
Got to get us home when the GPS gets turned off. So I made a video the other day talking about this where Colin now keeps blaming Brock Purdy and taking away blame from Shanahan. And this is funny because someone then – I asked for the clip. They sent me the clip that was on his podcast, not on the show, so it's a little bit different. But he blamed Shanahan for the Super Bowl loss. He said the, the loss is on Shanahan. And he's blamed Shanahan consistently in the second half of his inability to call plays. That he gets too that he that he that he gets too tight with the plays that he wants to call and doesn't adapt throughout the game. This is what Colin has said consistently about Shanahan over the last couple of years or so. But now we're back to just blaming Brock Purdy. And I'm not from the camp of blaming Shanahan either necessarily. I'm saying it's it's often a collection of issues. I think Shanahan is an unbelievable coach. But this idea, though, that we're now just piling and just 100% blaming Purdy, that's the issue that I have. And I love the highlights that we see. It's like Brock Purdy throwing an interception and Brock Purdy being sacked, you know, and it's like, okay, great. Let's let's just like take the plays of, of Brock Purdy not looking so good in those singular moments. Um, but it's funny because if you look at PFF, uh, you want to say, oh, his completion percentage, this, that. But then if you go to Pro Football Focus and you uh, look at the um, the quarterback stats and the ratings, Brock Purdy is considered a top quarterback in the NFL right now, despite some of those things that were highlighted. And it's not because he had two unbelievable, insanely high games, like a Derek Carr, right? Those first two games just put up cartoonish numbers. So now those numbers can carry him through, you know, less than ideal games, at least for the next few games. Um, that's not what it's been with Brock Purdy at all. Um, so again, and also like, what is the standard here? You're either Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady, or you're just a, an okay quarterback. Like that's the stat. That's the standard here. You're either Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, or you're just okay. It's like, what? Like what? How, how, how does that, how does that make sense? Like, let's like, like, what? Like what? So. I just, I really just disagree. And I'm not even this big, gigantic, mega Brock Purdy fan. I'm not here saying Brock Purdy is the greatest quarterback. Brock Purdy is top two quarterback. I, I'm not saying any of those things. But like the constant hate, and this is what's crazy. And again, Colin changes his mind. The thing that I respect about him more than anything um, is that he's willing to evolve. He doesn't double, triple, quadruple down on his take if they're wrong. Right, he rather be right, and he evolves his opinion, um, which is what I largely try my best to do as well. Um, but it seems to me that he just simply can't make up his mind on Brock Purdy, because he said Brock Purdy's bad. Brock Purdy's bad, not that good. Then in the playoffs against the Packers, he's like, "Hey man, he found a way." And then against the Lions, uh, when they found a way, he went and said, "Hey man, Jimmy Garoppolo could never, you know, Brock Purdy." is good then loses the super bowl and then even says yeah you needed probably a little bit better of a quarterback you need your quarterback to be a little bit better there were some issues so you can't put all the blame on brock purdy but if brock purdy was just five ten percent better they come away with that win right that is what truly elite quarterbacks can do they can overcome the fumble the muff punt the injuries whatever it may be right like that's that's why they get paid the money that they they get paid and that's why they get the praise that they get praise but still he, like I said, he actually blamed Shanahan more and the play calling in the second half more than anything else. And now as the season goes along, it's, hey, you don't have all the Avengers. Let's see what Brock Purdy can do. Brock Purdy plays great. And it's like, wow, Brock Purdy's a franchise quarterback. I am impressed. That is awesome. That is great. And now a couple games go badly. Not really Brock Purdy's fault, particularly not his fault that special teams was a mess and lost to the Rams. Not his fault that his field goal kicker got injured, which as Greg Jennings beautifully put, that that changes everything. That changes everything. People don't realize that it's not like, oh, you just can't kick field goals now. No, it changes everything. It changes how you call. It changes how you approach the game. It changes everything. And now Brock Purdy's just, yeah. He's just kind of a dude. He's just kind of like average. When he doesn't have everything perfect, he's just kind of average. And again, this is what I said about Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's superpower 
is his consistency and him being a maximizer. So when you give him great talent, he can maximize that talent. He can maximize what they have. Did Josh Allen maximize Stephon Diggs? Maybe, maybe not, right? I don't know about that, right? Uh, does Jalen Hurts maximize A.J. Brown and Devontae? I don't know. Does, does, does Dak Prescott maximize C.D. Lamb? I don't know. But I am very confident Brock Purdy maximizes what Brandon Ayuk has done, maximizes Debo, maximizes Christian McCaffrey, maximizes Kittle. He maximizes the talent around him, okay? He's not just throwing to wide open guys. It's not just that Shanahan schemes these guys open and they're just wide open and they take care of the rest. That is one of the most biggest misleading uh, takes about Brock Purdy in this offense. It's just not true. He sets those guys up to be great. Because if those guys are so great and they don't need a great quarterback, well, those guys are playing right. Ayuk is playing right now. Kittle's playing. Debo is playing. Shanahan is still the play caller. So then why, why why are they winning? Why is it all falling on Brock Purdy? I don't I don't understand. If Brock Purdy had those guys last year and was balling out and everything was great, why is it that now all of it falls on Brock Purdy? That's what doesn't make sense to me. That makes no sense. If Shanahan had the same problem with second halves with Jimmy Garoppolo, why is it that Shanahan no longer gets blamed for that and we're just putting it all the blame on Brock Purdy? It could be an issue of Shanahan. And again, it doesn't mean that we have to say that Brock Purdy is 100% perfect or that Brock Purdy doesn't have any responsibility. I'm not saying that. Just like Patrick Mahomes has responsibility, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, it's, it's all shared responsibility. My issue is with the, with the conversations about Brock Purdy is it's always all or nothing. He gets 100% none of the credit when they do good and win. And he gets 100% all of the blame when things aren't going well, that's what doesn't make sense. And I'm sitting here, just made a couple videos defending Josh Allen for the Bills failures. And I'm like, well, yeah. And when the when the Chiefs are winning, I'm like, well, the the all the also the also the praise can't 100 percent go to go to Patrick Mahomes. He's playing all his numbers are awful. He's got more interceptions, a worse completion percentage, a worse rating than than Brock Purdy, but they're winning. Because their defense has been elite. And because Andy Reid knows how to do scripted and unscripted. You want to talk about unscripted plays? Patrick Mahomes can do unscripted plays in the best in the NFL. Greatest of all time. No one's doubting that. Andy Reid is the one that dialed up a few plays. The one against the Ravens, the pass to ice the game. That was absolutely unbelievable. And Patrick Mahomes made a perfect throw. But that's why they're the perfect duo. Also in the Super Bowl... Who was calling the plays in overtime? Oh, yeah, Andy Reid. Patrick Mahomes absolutely went on a run, and it was great, and it was very important. But my God, did you see how wide open some of those guys were? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Andy Reid's play calling and play design. Exactly. Pretty sure it was the Kansas City Chiefs defense that bailed out Patrick Mahomes for throwing an awful interception, where I think after that they didn't even get any point. I don't even know if they even got a field goal off of that. So it's always a combination of things. It's never just one or the other. But yet, with some quarterbacks, they get 100% of the praise, 100% none of the blame. Whereas we have other quarterbacks that we have like those three categories. They either get 100% praise, 100% none of the blame, or 100% of the praise, 100% of the blame, or 100% none of the praise, and 100% all of the blame. And Brock Purdy has fallen into that category. And um, it's just disappointing to see. And I love what Greg Cosell said, not about Brock Purdy, but he said this about, um, I think it was about Jaden Daniels. He said the way how he approaches things first is he goes, I watch film first um, before I look at stats. And I will then, he goes, if I see something, I will then look to the stats to see, you know, if it validates that. But he cares more about what he sees than the stats itself, which is what I've always said. I've always said stats are misleading, stats are misleading, stats are misleading. They can sometimes be used to validate certain things, but it's a lot harder 
to use stats to invalidate what you're showing on film, right? It's just, it's just a, it's a, it's a asymmetrical relationship with that, which is what I think people really struggle with, quite frankly, to, to understand. And I get it because it can be confusing. It's like sometimes you're like, well, hey, the stats prove this, but then how come the stats don't disprove it? And it's like, it's, it's, it's a weird situation. And I confess there's, it's, it's, um, it can be hard to navigate. But this is a perfect example of stats invalidating what Brock Purdy has done and what Brock Purdy consistently puts on film. You can't just say, he's got a less completion percentage than Will Levis. Okay, what does the film say? You go watch both those quarterbacks and let me know who's the better quarterback. You go tell me. You go tell me. Go ahead. You go look me straight in the face and say that Will Levis is a better quarterback or is throwing a better ball or making better decisions or throwing more accurate passes than Brock Purdy. You go tell me that. And it has nothing to do with the weapons at hand. Nothing to do with that. Just watch the film purely at the quarterback position not who he's throwing to nothing else just look at how he plays quarterback and you tell me exactly so the fact that you want to compare it to a will levis is just further proof that stats are insane does anyone think that if you put will levis on the 49ers that they're going to go to two nfc championship games or that they're going to go to the super bowl i don't think a single person thinks that so if you need an example of how misleading stats can be there's your example but those are just my thoughts i'd absolutely love to hear yours what do you guys all think about brock purdy and the 49ers this is just a conversation that just will never go away i feel like i have to make like five brock purdy videos every single week kind of crazy and you know what's funny if the 49ers start to write this ship and start to continue to play they'll say shanahan and and, and iuke is finally playing great but those are just my thoughts I'd absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think about this? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussion. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I'd absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.